So there's the arm and the, the monitor all together. <clears throat> I'll point out down here on the bottom, you got a stud that you screw into there. And you got these pieces here so you can kind of adjust it and it'll it'll float, you know. So I think the best location to mount it is probably going to be right in this area right here. It's still flat. And they I think all these arms are kind of universally built like this. They have tapped holes. They come with set screws in case you need to mount this on a surface that's not square, such as if you actually wanted it back here. You can still mount it there if you want, and you use the set screws to adjust it the way, you know, adjust it square so that it's hitting on four points. I think I'm going to put it all the way to the back of that little area right there and mount it, mount it right in there. And one of the things that you look for is, you know, make sure that your quill handle is going to clear. So that gives you room to get your hand in there whenever you're cranking this quill and you're not smashing your hand on it you know if you was to put it right there see so if you mount one of these up just pay attention to that i think that area right in there is going to be pretty good because you start curving out right about there and down here you know so we'll we'll put it right there you use that transfer punch there All right, we're nice and level. We're gonna go ahead and transfer punts to this other side right here. If I can find my tools. Make sure that I don't fall off there. Okay, all right, one more time, drill and tap. All right, let's see if it fits up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Ah, uh, push the the nut out of it. <clears throat> I 
it. So that's adjustable so you can put whatever tension you want on it. That's nice so it ain't just flailing around in the air. Alright. Alright guys, there we go. Got our monitor mounted. So, I think I'm ready to go ahead and get this thing plugged in. And let's see it operate for the first time together. Alright, we got our two plugs for our encoders in there. And I, I might have them right. There's a possibility that it could be wrong. If so, you can just flip them. Alright. And yes, we still we're gonna have to go in. We got to do our our fine tuning and and wrap all these cords up and get them mounted on the machine out of the way. We're gonna do that after we uh, see this thing run for the first time. There it is, plugged in for the first time. Probably need to go check the manual and see what's going on here. Ah, we got movement. I got to figure out how the functions work on this one. I'm used to the the C80, so this one's a little bit a little bit different here. All right, let's see if we'll data and recall. I like, I prefer my inch. <laughs> Let me, uh, let's go to zero right there on the dial. Looks like we're right on it. Okay. Looking good. So one of the things that I wanted to figure out how to do with this one right off is the bolt circle diameter. Or, you know, if you want to use it to uh, drill a bolt pattern, that's one of the most common uses besides just, you know, finding your coordinates and following along. So it come, the DP500 comes with this quick start guide and I've been looking through it and it gives you some basic setups in here how to set a zero you got a function right there that you can use uh, zero or set zero so if you just want to zero things out just just set it to the top where it says zero all right you can just zero it out like so uh, but what i was what i had noticed is that some of the places in here it says see full manual website so you go to newall.com and you can go to technical support and any of their full manuals for any other products are right there on pdf file so you click on it bam there's the entire there's the entire user manual on everything about these readouts not just this one but all of them all right so i figured out i know on the c80 you go to f1 this one you go to f and then you got functions and the pcd that's what was throwing me off i'm not used to that because the other one i think it says bc bolt circle that is pit circle diameter so let's see i think we hit the right arrow or no hit enter okay all right so now we're in there this is basically where you're going to start your circle i usually am always on zero okay so then we'll go to the next one your diameter so we'll go like we're doing a uh, 
Chevrolet pattern. 4.750. I think that was right. Yeah, four and three quarter, four and a half is Mustang pattern. Enter. So number of holes, you know, you go five, five, enter. Angle, which be your angle of approach for your first hole. If you want to start at like three o'clock or nine o'clock position, you just, you know, put punch that in there. Enter. Go. There we go. All right, hole number one. So you're going to move the readout to line up with your with your holes there, okay? Just go to zero. And you can cycle through you can cycle through your holes. So that's hole 1. You can go to hole 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, pretty cool. That makes doing bolt circles super easy. So now we do do the trim work on it, which is going to be tying all these cables up, getting them mounted on the machine, get everything looking nice and, and organized. So that's what I'm going to work on. I don't think it's uh, really worth filming a lot of that, but I'm going to show you what I do once I get it. You know, I plan on kind of coil them up. And the, the box comes with zip ties and all the little cable attachments so that you can mount these things right over here on the machine. All right. So I'm going to play around with that and try to get everything tucked away nice and then I'll bring you back and show you what mine looks like. So the cables I've got zip tied together. They do supply you with several zip ties and I also use some that I had here as well. They do supply you with the little the little hangers there, the, the wire hangers. They, they have aluminum and plastic and there wasn't enough aluminum ones to do it all so I had to use some of the plastic ones as well. All right, up here, they provide you with some slots inside this bracket right here so that you can, I assume so you can run the zip ties. That's what I use them for anyway. I've got everything run. I tried to make it nice and neat. You know, I, I was really trying to make a, a sort of a neat job out of it. And I, I'm not calling this perfect by no means, but I'm kind of happy with it. I will say that I've got slack here. Okay, so you know, you've got to move the ram, the uh, the turret in and out, and I already did that. I moved it out, so I've got enough slack right there, but all I got to do is just kind of pop these zip ties and and give myself some more if I, if I really do need to move it out that far. So we've got movement there. Same thing right here. I've got enough right here for the travel of the knee up and down. Okay, so if I if for some reason I need a little bit more, I can always pull some more through there. But I tried to keep it minimal as I could. And while I was at it, I went ahead and hung hung this wire up as well. This is for the servo right there. That's always like dragging down in the floor. So I had I had one more left and I just kind of hung it right there to get it up out of the way. So I left the lights on here so you kind of see the back. I've got the power source right here bolted to the machine and I've got everything just kind of hung and uh, zip tied behind the machine try to make it kind of neat I went ahead and kind of fixed up this more rigid so it wasn't you know won't flop around the one thing that I am unhappy about that I don't like is the way this is mounted in there this keeps loosening up on that stud so I'm going to have to take it off. I've already taken it off twice to try to get it mounted in there correctly. And then when I go to like turn it, it, it loosens from the stud in there. So I just got to redo that again. I'll just do that off camera. But I really don't like the way that setup is right there. They got it so that you can kind of snug this up, you know, and it just it's not flopping around. But then when I go to like, if I want to go turn it that way, well, it loosens the, the stud from inside the tapped hole. I'm very happy with the with having a re, a readout now, and now that I have it on the mill, I'm just I'm very excited about being able to utilize that in the future on different jobs. You know, if I want to do some bolt circles now, to make it so much easier. So we need to get it cleaned up. I didn't want to spend any time doing that because I just wanted to spend the weekend getting it mounted on there. So I need I need to get it cleaned up and get it raised up and put on some of those leveling pads. I got this right here that I need to take care of. So that's my next thing is to fix this cable right here and probably loosen it from there and pick it up and maybe 
put it up a little bit higher so that it's not resting on that guard right there all right so we're going to work on that real soon i went ahead and zeroed it and i wanted to just kind of take a comparison reading using this uh this, this dial indicator let's see if i can move it one thou okay it looks like maybe one thousandths one thousandths and earlier i was playing around with the dials here moving it and i kept testing it and it was it was right on the same readings up here with addition to tenths now as well so i'm going to play around with the functions and try to get more familiar with the the functions on the on the dp500 all right so one more thing that i wanted to do you know there's there may be guys watching this that's never installed a digital readout and they're they're looking for little tips and tricks because maybe they want to install one too so i figured we just kind of throw this kind of stuff in there as uh as we since we're making this video on an install and i'm going to kind of go over some of the tools that you'll need if you decide you want to install one on your machine as well okay luckily for me i pretty much had everything that i needed but take a look uh, this is this is a lot of what i what i use so if you was to get this kit i don't know about the others this was all metric so you're going to have to have some metric taps i believe i used four five six and eight millimeter taps of course you need some tap wrenches to go with those i use some of my standard taps as well for a couple of the mounts so you know i, I used a couple of them uh, a level I have this set of metric drills that I utilize for a lot of the drilling. I did end up using a couple of the drills out of this numbered index. All right, you need some wrenches, standard and, and uh, metric as well. A little socket wrench. Some pliers, side cutters for the, for the zip ties. It's really helpful if you have some transfer punches that really make some of it easy. You need like a center point punch right there you know a, a soft blow hammer and a punch a drill motor of your choice some zip ties and that's probably about all of the uh, the general tools that you're going to have to have for for an install okay so i hope you guys enjoyed following along on this install here and i'm really happy to have it again so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to kind of uh, sign off from here and this is going to be about the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed and look for this to be used in some future videos. <laughs>